In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm not quite sure where to put that thing. I hope they'll put up the, the back of it. Strikes me as quite moving and extraordinary this Sunday as we gather that the first reading, first lesson today from the first book of Kings, an extraordinary moment in the life of the prophet Elijah, a moment in which he had in effect given up and has come through the wilderness praying that his life might end meets God in that moment of despair, precisely, and meets God in a fashion that we might not expect, where there has been a terrible wind and an earthquake and a fire. And finally, as the scripture says this morning, a beautiful phrase, Pure silence. And only when Elijah hears the pure silence does he know that God is with him. We see Elijah there on the mountain in the presence of God, in the midst of a storm, in the midst of a fire. Think of that and think of the news of the past few days. Think of the hurricane south of the island of Maui. And think of the raging fire driven before that wind. We can be tempted in moments like that and with every good reason to say, where is God in this picture? This morning, at least when I arose, the death toll of the business 93 overnight. that appears in all four of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, 
It's just after that that Jesus says two things at least. One is, I really need some time alone. I'm so glad that he, he used to do that. So you, 5,000, you've got something to eat, go. And you, 12, get in the boat, go to the other side, I'll see you soon. There, during the night, again, in different circumstances than Elijah, but not unlike, the twelve find themselves out in the middle of a kind of wilderness, the sea of Gennesaret. And they're in trouble. The wind is against them, it's higher. It's anybody's guess whether they're going to be able to get to the other side. And in the middle of that, in the middle of that harrowing moment, Jesus appears walking on the water. Well, that would wake you up when you were tired, right? He appears walking on the water. And I want you to concentrate for a moment on what we heard as the exchange between Jesus as he approaches the boat and Peter. Everybody naturally is scared out of their wits and starts screaming in fear. And he says beautiful words of the Christ. He says, Don't be afraid. It is I. Or in the, in the Greek it says, Don't be afraid. I am, which is the name of God. I am. According to God's own testimony. And Peter, Jesus doesn't then say to Peter, Peter, if you believe it's me, seven hours of water and come to me. Peter, with his little faith, as Jesus will call it a few sentences later, Peter, on his own, says, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you across the water. And Jesus says, Come. Like he said when he first called them as disciples, right? Come, follow me. He says, come. Peter, just think about this. Peter, the one of little faith, steps out of the boat in the middle of a storm. That's little faith. <laughs> if that's little faith, I have no faith. So can you imagine? And scripture says his faith was great enough. It says he began to walk on the water. It doesn't say he immediately sank, as we expect. It's only when Peter is overwhelmed by fear, when he realizes how much is pushing against him with the wind and the waves, that he begins to sink. And even then, he knows exactly what to do. What does he do? He says, Lord, Save me. If you, if you have no other prayer at your disposal all the days of your life, take that away from the scriptures and keep it in your hip pocket always. Lord, save me. Because again it says, Jesus responds immediately. Reaches out his hand, takes his hand, takes Peter's hand, and helps him into the boat. And the, the waves are calm. I picture, you know, a lot of men when you're reading scripture aloud, what kind of flesh you put on things. Jesus could have been saying, Peter, why did you doubt you a little thing? But I deliberately read the way I picture it, Jesus embracing it and saying so gently, why did you doubt you of little faith. In other words, how could you ever think for a moment that I would allow you to sin? What about us, friends? We are in the boat of our lifetime. We are in the boat of this church. We are in the boat of all we've experienced so far in our lives, all our memories, all our expectations, all our hopes that fulfilled and not. 
step out of the boat of our own comfort to know. And you know that I thought this was true before it was damaged and repaired. To know that it's not right to leave that space empty and unused in a society, a city, and a world whose needs are so many and so obvious. How many are facing terrible meetings and don't know where to turn? That makes me think how many nonprofit organizations whose mission accords with ours might benefit when that space is ready by our teaming up with someone and giving them space if they need it to carry on or expand the work that is theirs. Not to bring in money to us but to expand our mission in the name of Christ. I was reading this morning the United Way globally is reporting. For the last several years through COVID, but it's not stopping. The number of homeless in the city of Worcester is rising and rising and rising. I was stunned to see from last year to this year. That is to get a full year rates from, from 2021 to 2022. The rate of homelessness, the number of people homeless, put it another way, in the city of Worcester, are you ready for this? Rose 22%. 22%. There are thousands of refugees from Haiti a nation which is in absolute disarray. A nation where a nation where every great group trying to help running orphanages or running eating programs or running hospitals now can only do their work by hiring what amounts to a small militia to guard them so that they can continue. Here we do not have that problem, but we do have among us some of the people who have fled that problem. Like Elijah, as he headed toward the mountain, they may be in despair. Like the people of Lahaina today, they may be in deep mourning. I really want us to consider, to think, to pray. What might we be able to do? Just us. So often in church life, for some reason, we start by thinking, oh, we couldn't possibly do this or that or the other thing. Don't, don't start there. Start from even if it's small. We could do this little thing. We could start with this little bit and see what grows from that. And I know, I know, Food we collect every week for the community center up the street. The, the refrigerator stands down in the parking lot already bear witness to your willingness to take those steps. But there's always another step to take. Jesus never says that's enough. I wish he did sometimes. What he does say is, thank you. Thank you for receiving the grace and strength I've given you. Thank you for taking yet another step. Last night I wanted to add to the prayers of the people today, which is not in there, a petition about what has happened in Howard. So I started thinking about a petition, but I ended up writing a whole prayer. So I'm going to use that prayer this morning that I prepared last night to just pour it out of me as a closing prayer for the prayers of the people this morning. Let us hold those people in prayer. Let us believe with the God who saved Elijah from the spirit and sent him back to anoint Hazael and Jehu and Elisha and get the job done. And Jesus who saved Peter and put him back in the boat, not so that he stay in the boat, so that he get out of the boat, 